Welcome back everyone. This is Brian. In this episode, we're going to talk about iterators. They make counting easy and we've actually worked with these before, but we're going to really dive under the hood and see what makes them work. So for example, if you're really confused about what an iterator is, let's just say one, two, three, four. We've got a simple tuple here and we're going to say four X in T. Go ahead and print X. Run this. Voila, one, two, three, four. But how does that actually work? How does Python know how to go through each and every single item and how to treat each item? That's what we're really gonna dive into in this video. Let's pop open the hood and see what's going on here. So we're talking about iter basics. Well, lists, tuples, dictionary sets, even strings and vastly huge amounts of other objects are iterable. We use a function called iter to get the iterable object. Let's take a look here. So I'm going to say people equals, and we're just gonna make a simple list here. Brian, comma, Tammy, and our family dog, the old lazy, stinky dog, Rango. And we want to iter through that. So I'm gonna say i equals i-t-e-r, and we're going to use that list right there. So if we go ahead and print this out, let's take a quick peek at what I actually is. It is a list iterator, object at. So this is a separate object from our list. It's not the list, it's an iterator, which tells Python how to maneuver through that list. Okay, great. Now let's actually go through this. I'm going to say print, and we're going to call the next function, which is going to tell the iterator, hey, move to the next position. Assuming that this started at the very beginning, the next position is, well, Brian. So let's go ahead and run this. And sure enough, there's Brian. And now instead of knowing some sort of index, we can just say next, next, next. See, Brian, Tammy, Ringo. And it's just going to keep moving or iterating through that list. Now, an interesting little bit here is if we try to go beyond the scope of that list, notice how it throws an error. It's a stop iteration. This is what Python's using under the hood to tell itself it needs to stop moving through this because it simply hit the end. So we can continue on. I'm going to comment that out. But it's very important you understand what a stop iteration is and why it's there. It simply tells Python, hey, we've hit the end, stop processing this. Now that we understand the basics, we're gonna make our own class. So we're gonna say 4x in our custom class, iterate through it. And under the hood, it's going to call next and all that fun stuff. And we're not gonna play around the stop iteration, but I wanted you to understand that exists. So if you're trying to push through next and you get some sort of error, you know what it's doing. Older tutorials, you would actually have to raise that yourself, so it gets a little confusing. We're going to do it the easy way, or I should say the Python 3 way. We're going to say import random, and we're going to make a random number generator, or a lottery class. A lot of people want to win the lottery. I know I do. Man, the things I would do if I won the lotto. So we're going to say def. We're going to init self. This is just simply our constructor, and we're going to say self dot underscore max equals five. If you have no idea why there's an underscore again, watch the previous videos. All right, so def, and then we want to call iter underscore underscore self. And this is where we're really deviating from other tutorials out there, because other would have the iter, plus you'd have a next function and you have to track where you are in some internal list. We're not going to do any of that because we simply don't need to. So. In the iter function, we're going to use what's called yield. And yield is incredibly cool. I'm going to paste some notes here. The yield statement suspends the function's execution and sends a value back, a lot like how a return would return a value. However, instead of returning out, we stay right here where we are and we retain enough state to continue on where we left off. This is extremely powerful. So instead of returning, which is going to break out, and then we call this function over and over again. We're going to say for underscore, because I don't need a variable, in range 
And we're simply going to say self dot underscore max. We're going to go ahead and call our yield. And we're going to create a random. And we want a rand range between zero and whatever number the lottery commission would want as a maximum. All right, now we want to allow them to tweak this if they wanted to. So I'm going to say, just because I'm a nice guy, def set max, self value. That way, whoever's using our little lottery class can set the maximum if they want to. From here, it becomes ridiculously simple to use. You're going to see other tutorials out there where they got all these functions and you're tracking some internal counter. Yeah, we're not going to play around with any of that. Go ahead and print. Just want to separate this out on the screen. Let's go ahead and create an instance of our Lotto class. And let's go ahead and say Lotto.setMax. And I want maximum of 10 values. Now comes the fun bit. We're going to say 4x in Lotto. Print x. So let's go ahead and run this, see what happens. Ta-da! We have got our random numbers. And we can even, if we wanted to, say we want, say, 50 of these. So it's going to kick out a lot of numbers here. Let's go ahead and clear that, and bang! There's our 50 random numbers. Extremely cool the way this works. So quick, quick recap. What we're doing here is we're just simply making a class, calling the constructor, setting some internal values, and then we have this iter function. Other tutorials, you're going to see something similar to this, but it's also going to be followed up with something like next. And then you would have some code. We don't need that because we're using yield. And unlike return, yield will return the value, but then stay right here in this current context. And when the execution pops back, it will just continue on its merry way. Very cool, very powerful feature. Makes life very, very simple compared to how it used to be. Gotta love Python 3. I hope you enjoyed this video. You can find the source code out on github.com. If you need additional help, myself and thousands of other developers are hanging out in the Void Realms Facebook group. This is a large group with lots of developers, and we talk about everything technology related, not just the technology that you just watched. And if you want official training, I do develop courses out on udemy.com. This is official classroom style training. If you go out there and the course you're looking for is just simply not there, drop me a note. I'm either working on it or I will actually develop it. I will put a link down below for all three of those. And as always, help me help you smash that like and subscribe button. The more popular these videos become, the more I'll create and publish out on YouTube. Thank you for watching.